I can't imagine what it must feel like to switch sides in the middle of an all-out war. When looking at the numbers, not many people do it. And in this case, we're going to talk about the only American during the entirety of World War II to abandon his country and to not only just surrender to Nazi Germany, but flying there with the intention of joining their efforts in the war. Martin James Monty did just that. Let's talk about how bizarre these circumstances are. Monty was a United States Air Force pilot, born in Missouri, as one of seven children born to German-American parents. That, in consideration, may make some sense, but there are definitely some head-scratching moments. Beginning in 1938, not long before the invasion of Poland, Adolf Hitler initiated a foreign policy called Hyman's Reich. The meaning of this is back home to the Reich. This action called on ethnic Germans who were living outside of Nazi Germany to come back home. This applied in many areas around the world and saw the return of almost one million Germans. Monty didn't return to Germany in the late 1930s for this call though, or even in the early 1940s. Monty defected and joined Nazi Germany in October of 1944, and that is an odd time for one to make up their mind as to when they'll switch sides. Given that it was evident Nazi Germany was being absorbed from both sides by the Allies, it just seems strange someone would denounce their country and join a losing faction. Now here's something important to consider. Martin James Monty joined the Waffen SS, the Nazi paramilitary group devoted to Hitler, so his allegiance was also in line with their ideology. If he were more concerned with just defending Germany without representing the Nazis, he could have just joined the Wehrmacht. This guy really doubled down though. On top of becoming a member of the SS, the propaganda minister Joseph Goebbels tested his new American traitor to the German radio stations. Monty disguised his last name using his mother's maiden name. Monty broadcasted to the Allies, admitting that he switched sides to do what he thought was best for the outcome of the war, and that was to defeat communism. And he also encouraged others to defect as he did. Here is something interesting. Monty wasn't the only American touting propaganda to the Allies. Mildred Gillers, who was also dubbed the name Axis Sally by American soldiers, was also an American used for propaganda by Nazi Germany. The difference between the two is that Gillers had been in Germany since 1934 only as a citizen. So let's get into the details of who inspired Monty and how he defected. Monty was heavily influenced by a Catholic priest named Charles Coughlin, who had a popular radio show back in the US. This priest was favorable to FDR, but then changed his mind in the mid-30s when he vocally attacked Jewish bankers and supported some of the Nazi policies and those of fascist Italy. However, his radio station was so popular enough that FDR's administration canceled the radio program and banned the distribution of its newspapers called Social Justice. The reason I bring this up is because Monty was a big fan of the program, who traveled to see Coughlin before the war. He got to meet him and share a conversation, and then it was off to Europe to engage in World War II as a U.S. Air Force pilot. Martin James Monty made it to Europe, and he had a few promotions under his belt. If there was one thing he was good at, it was lying. Because while he was at an airfield north of Naples, Monty observed an F-5E Lightning aircraft. It was unarmed and being serviced, and would require a test flight. He reported he was with the group and needed to check it out. His rank as a sergeant probably helped here. Monty hopped in the plane and headed straight to Nazi-occupied Milan on October 13, 1944. As soon as he landed, he surrendered and was taken as a prisoner of war. Monty handed over the aircraft and pleaded with the Germans his desire to switch sides. It didn't take a strong interrogation to realize Monty's conviction. His distaste for communism showed. They believed him and had him do his broadcast and granted him the equivalent rank that he had in the U.S. to his new SS position. However, this was short-lived. 
He was in Berlin and realized Germany was falling. So it was time to return back to Milan, Italy, to the Americans. On his way there, he was still in his SS uniform and removed the insignias. He showed up, and now he was being interrogated by US Army officers, who thought he was initially a German prisoner of war. He didn't bring up his SS involvement, and further into questioning, he said he had only taken an aircraft because he was bored, and figured he could fight the Germans himself. The wild thing is, the American interrogators believed him. The story is, Monty jumped in that plane because he was bored and ready to just get into action. The story goes as believed. During his flight, he was shot down by the Germans, but he managed to meet with partisans who gave him the SS uniform, and that's why he had it on. And the result of this was him being court-martialed for stealing the plane and desertion. On August 6th, 1945, Martin James Monty was sentenced to 15 years in prison. However, on February the 11th, 1946, the sentence was suspended by President Harry S. Truman after pleas were made for him from family connections. It should be noted Monty came from an upper-class family, and they got by just fine during the Depression. But there was one condition to apply to his sentence being commuted. Monty had to re-enlist in the Air Force as a private. Monty did follow through with this and enlisted exactly one year later. Monty became a sergeant by the time he was honorably discharged on January 26th, 1948. But something happened. Monty was arrested again, this time in New York by the FBI with treason for the propaganda he was sharing during the war. They would figure out his alias was using his mother's maiden name. The media started running stories, and it's the first time Monty was being accused of being a Nazi in court, an accusation carelessly used in modern times. But here is the case of an American man legitimately being accused of being a Nazi, as one headline referred to his case as a Yank in the SS. The Americans took the bait the first time, charging him with only desertion. Monty's defense told him it's probably best to admit it this time because if they find him guilty, he'd face capital punishment. This was a publicized case, and Martin James Monty admitted to defecting to Nazi Germany. Not only was the public shocked, but it's documented the court itself, including the defense, was in shock. Monty answered honestly to stealing the plane, spreading propaganda by various methods, including leaflets and broadcast, joining the SS, and all other counts of treason. Something interesting I want to note in is that when Axis Sally originally saw Monty in Berlin, she had already been doing radio propaganda and labeled Monty as a spy and said she refused to broadcast if he was to work there and that he needed to be removed. Her request was denied. However, Monty only lasted a few broadcasts before they decided to cut him and send him back out. Axis Sally, also known as Mildred Gillers, would then resume her work after he left. Monty's answers to the prosecution were brief, but all confirmed his treason. He pleaded with the judge for leniency and admitted that his true intention was to take his fight with communism. Martin James Monty was found guilty on all 21 charges of treason against him and sentenced to 25 years in prison. Shortly after, he would go on a hunger strike and they put him in solitary confinement for a brief time. Although in 1951, he tried to withdraw his plea insisting of having no treasonable intent once he was on enemy territory, he would be paroled in 1960. In 1963, he tried to have his treason reversed and wanted to be recognized for only going to Germany to end Hitler in the war, but this would be denied by a federal court in Brooklyn. The remainder of his life was spent working as a factory supervisor and passing away in Florida on September 11th of 2000 in the Sacred Heart Cemetery. Like and subscribe for more. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.